everyone. I'm Kristen, and this is another episode of First Person. Today we're going to be talking about bisexuality, which is exciting to me for a couple of reasons. The biggest one being that so many of you said, please give us an episode on bisexuality. So, ta-da. And also because the reason so many of you asked is it's a huge issue within queer and non-queer communities alike. And that's the case because for so many people who identify as bisexual, they're being erased. People who are not in queer communities are saying, you can't be bisexual. You have to be either or. You're gay or you're straight. And we're also hearing a lot from within the queer community this same thing. It's really troublesome and it can be even more troublesome for people perceived as male. So we're gonna sit down today with Vivek Shreya. He is the author of this incredible book called She of the Mountains. It's a bisexual love story and it really mirrors a lot of Vivek's personal experience. Vivek identifies as bisexual and we're gonna sit down with him today at the Powerhouse Arena, which is an awesome bookstore in Dumbo, Brooklyn. So we're gonna talk to him about how he decided to write this book and what he feels, how he came to identify as bisexual, what it means to him. Let's go talk to Vivek. So She of the Mountains, this just came out. Yes. Can you tell us about it? Let's start there. I wanted to make some kind of art that would challenge biphobia. For most of my life, I feel like I've heard two messages predominantly. And one was that I'm a girly boy. And two, that as a girly boy, I couldn't possibly be attracted to other women. And the impact of both of those messages and the way they connect with each other, it's meant always overthinking my desire for people, questioning my desire for people, feeling shame. And so the, the idea was to write a love story. Is this, is this a personal story? Like, does this come from your own experience? Yeah, so this book is largely based on my own experience. Um, I was in a relationship for 10 years with a woman, and it was one of, like, I mean, it, she's one of the loves of my life. You know, I adore her, and yet, you know, kind of like in the book, there were these variety of scenarios where like I'd be out with my friends with a female partner at a gay bar and people would go up to my friends and be like, you know, he's gay, right? You know. I've had plenty of experiences where I'll walk into a gay bar with my female partner and because of the way that I present and the way that I look, I've had people say like, you know, she's straight. Exactly. Right? She's exactly. not going to stay with you. She's wearing earrings. And what's been interesting for me too is that in some ways I found more support um, from straight individuals, especially straight cis men, because, oh, well, of course you'd like women, right? Yeah. Like, that's what's really interesting, right? Is that, like, I when I started, you know, ha having relationships with women, I was getting flack from the queer communities, but not so much from straight communities. I think that's what it is. Totally. Like, so many of the queer people you were talking to were like, how? I don't feel like that, so how could you possibly feel like that? And the thing that I find so frustrating is that most of us have been, most like people in the LGTB community, LGTBQ community have been, have experienced policing, right? In some kind of way in our adolescence. And yet then we enforce that on other people. How do you feel being seen as a bisexual male? Do you feel like there's a difference? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I've been thinking so much about this, about how my experience of biphobia um, intersects with me being perceived as male and me being a person of color. It's been really interesting to like find misogyny sort of at the root of that because so much of the biphobia that I've experienced um, has been from gay men. And I think that in some ways where that's coming from is like, you can possibly desire a woman Ugh. and all this sort of thing, right? Again, going back to what I was saying earlier, my experience with, you know, the way my gender played out as a child and being told I was gay, that was about misogyny too. Or as, like in North America, there's nothing worse than for a boy to act like a girl. And then as a bi person of color, when oppressions intersect, inevitably the experience is deeper. And I think people just get very afraid that we're going to undermine the politic or something by not fitting into the box. Totally. I mean, I can't tell you how many times someone sat me down and was like, Listen, when I was first coming out, I dated a girl, you know, or I had sex with a girl, but as soon as I had sex with her, like, I just knew. And once you're with the, once you have sex with a man, like, it's gonna make sense. And the thing is, I did have sex with men, right? Like, that's the thing is, like, I kept waiting for that, you know, I talk about this in the book too, like, the character keeps waiting for that eureka moment, like, yes, 
<laughs> I am free. But like, I never felt that way. I never felt like my attraction for women was less than. It was just different. It was a different kind of desire. And I liked both. Let's talk about the word bisexual. It's kind of a contentious thing for the community at large, I think. people. Some people feel that it, it hinges on the binary and so are moving to terms like pansexual. Some people feel like it's excluding uh, trans identities. Other people don't feel that way at all and talk about bisexual as a self-other means of identifying. So for you, how does the term fit? How do you work with it? I do all kinds of anti-homophobia, anti-transphobia, anti-biphobia training in the college I work at. And anytime there's resistance to language, I find that it's usually rooted in a form of phobia. I've really struggled with the word bisexual because of biphobia, and so for me it's meant really trying to own that word and understanding that a lot of my discomfort with that word is because of the stigma around it. I mean, I love the word queer, and I have found freedom in the word queer, but, you know, a big part of this chapter of my life has also been, uh, has been about trying to understand why bisexual has made me uncomfortable as an identity and really trying to step into it and own it because I am bisexual. Thank you so much for watching. A huge thanks to Vivek Shreya for being with us and sharing his story. If you want to learn more about Vivek or find his wonderful, wonderful books, you can check the links below. Also, a big thanks to Powerhouse Arena in Dumbo. Um, we apologize if there was a little bit of background noise. They are a very busy place for very good reason. We want to encourage you all to keep commenting below and letting us know about other episode ideas that you have. Some of the feedback that we've gotten on particular episodes we want to dig into a little bit more. A lot of you have asked for an episode on non-binary identities, so trans identities that don't hinge on the binary. We would love to hear from you on guests that you would like to see on an episode about that. Let us know below. We had a really incredible conversation happening on that first episode and we are so excited because that is exactly what we wanted to happen and we want to continue talking with you so please don't stop talking to us and of course subscribe because we'll have new videos always coming at you and this way you can keep up to date. Thank you so much for watching. I like your dog shirt. Thank you, I like your pyramids. Thank you. I almost wore my dog shirt, but I thought it would be too much. I think you should have. Yeah. You'll look back on this Next moment. episode. Our follow-up episode. Yes. <laughs> Revenge, Revenge of the, of the bisexuals. bisexuals. Yes. Yeah. It's our time. <laughs>